So, let's paint a picture really quickly. You're pretty new to squad, and you've not long got on after a hard day at work. You're about 45 minutes into a game of random advance and secure, and you're fairly enjoying yourself. And you suddenly see a dreaded message pop up on your screen. You have been promoted to squad leader. Or alternatively, the game has just ended and is in the staging phase for the next game and all of the squads are either armor, locked or simply just full. Well, after this video, I can promise you, you will be ready to be the Sigma Chad that you are and carry the burden of being the squad lead that has either been dumped upon you or you've decided to take the opportunity and make a squad so all of the other newbies can join you and enjoy the game too. Hello everyone, my name's Honcho, and welcome to my squad leading crash course for new players. First up, we will start at the very basics. This one's a given, but you really need to have a working microphone. You can do it without one, but people will get a bit funny with you if you don't. Remember, squad is all about teamwork, and if no one can communicate with you properly, they're going to get a bit frustrated. Naturally, we all know that V is to talk in local, and B is to talk to your squad. Well. G is to speak in command comms. This is where other SLs can talk to inform each other what's going on, alert about enemy vehicles, or discuss the next move in the game plan. I will forewarn you though, it can get a bit dramatic sometimes. You can also speak to other squad leaders direct by using your number pad on your keyboard. Keys 1 through to 9 will direct call that specific squad leader, and number 0 goes straight to the commander. If you are making a squad, I highly recommend you call it new squad leader, or new to squad leading. Just like in my new player friendly guide where I said you need to tell people that you are new, this does the same thing as other players and squad leaders will be more patient with you and willing to help. Same goes over command comms, whether you've been promoted to SL or just started the squad, just say, hey, I've never done this before, what do you need me to do or where do you want me? Naturally, you need to have a squad leader kit. It can be one of the infantry SL kits, armor squad leader or lead pilot. They all work. However, I highly recommend using the infantry SL kit and I will explain why shortly. Now the main reason you need a squad leader kit overall is many servers have an auto kick feature that after a set period of time will kick people from the game who are squad leader but don't have the SL kit. Now the main reason the infantry SL kit is more preferable is you only need one other person near you to place a radio or a rally, whereas the armor roll you need three people so that can get a bit difficult. Okay, so you have a squad open, you have your SL kit, now you need to know how to build things. First and foremost, you will need a logistics truck that has supplies in it. Most come with around 1500 ammo and 1500 construction as default. These are marked on the map by a truck icon with three bullets inside, basically an ammo icon. Once you have your logi truck and your guys are inside, drive to the location that you wish to build. Try and find somewhere that's not too obvious, somewhere that has a good amount of cover, and somewhere you think, nah, no one's going to walk over here. Park your logi as close as possible to this, and then get out. You then want to press and hold T to bring up the squad leader menu. From there, you want to select and click on place radio. You will now have a green highlighted radio in front of you ready to place. Use the arrow keys to rotate it and then left click to place it when you are happy. Once placed, instruct someone by the logi to unload the supplies, preferably construction first. Now, if the radio is highlighted red, that means it cannot be put down because it's probably colliding with something and if it's orange, it's within a radio excluded area. I will get onto this shortly. Once your radio has been placed, press and hold T again and then scroll to deployables. The next option is tech structures and finally hab. The same principle comes again, look for a good place for it where people can get in and out easy enough and it's nicely secluded and hidden away. But it's a very good idea to not build right next to your radio. This is something that I covered in this video right here. In fact, if you open up your map, you will see a blue and grey ring around your radio. The inner blue circle is your building radius. You can build anywhere within that circle. The outer ring is an exclusion zone. This prevents any other friendly radios being built within that area. This is probably one of the biggest trip ups people have when trying to work out why they can't build a radio in the first place, as they are actually too close to somebody else's radio. Again, you can use the arrow keys to rotate 
your hab for better placement and slap it down. Now immediately after building this, go back into tech structures and place down either one or two ammo crates. This is where everyone can rearm from and the reason why I say two is if it's a busy hab, it stops everyone crowding around one crate and as someone who runs a lot of infantry fighting vehicles, if I ever get near a hub, the first thing I do is shoot and destroy the ammo crate. This is to stop any AT soldiers from rearming. So if you have two ammo crates, it still gives people a good chance to rearm in the situation that I turn up. Naturally, this is where your squad now comes in. Let your guys know hub and ammo crates have been placed as they are the only ones who can dig it up. If you look directly at it and press U on your keyboard, you will place a defense mark on it. And you can now let your squad know, hey, there's a hab on defense mark that needs digging up, please. And watch as your people gravitate towards it to dig it up. Now, yes, I know it's a milsim game, but remember, it is a game at the end of the day. Manners go a long way. Not everyone here is wanting to create that military life. So please treat people with respect. Now using the same menu as before, you will have other things like fortifications and weapons that you can also place. The same principle of placing your hub down is the same as placing down say a 50 cal bunker or a watchtower. Just make sure you have enough construction or ammo to do so. Next up, you probably want to place a rally down. You only need one other person with you as mentioned earlier, and you want to do this a good two to 300 meters away from your hub. So if your hab gets destroyed or disabled, you guys have somewhere else to spawn to save it. Okay, so that's the very basics down. You now know how to communicate, you now know what kit you need and how to build. So it's time to talk about a few basic strategies and game plan so you know what you're doing when the game starts. Now I'm basing this on random, advanced and secure as that's about 85% of the games that we all play on a general day-to-day -day basis. As a new squad leader, I highly recommend you take up what we call as back capping and a defensive role. Back capping is where you drive from your main to the first uncaptured objective, which will be marked on the map. This allows the more experienced players to push further ahead and get set up for more attacking focused positions or ambushes. It's a very good idea to not build a hab on the first two objectives as every team always has that one small squad in the Jeep who dedicate their time to driving around looking for undefended HABs on places that aren't active objectives. Now it may not sound like much, but every radio they destroy is 20 tickets off of your team's total. Usually the third capture point is a good place to build your first HAB, but if you are ever unsure, just press G and ask the other squad leaders for their input. What I'm telling you is a bit of a generalization, but it's something that I based my learning process as a squad leader in when I first started out. Now, the reason why I say take a defensive role is you don't have to worry about where the enemy is because the enemy knows where it isn't. Sorry, I had to do that. Defense is the backbone of your team. If nobody is defending the active objective, you and your team will get rolled and have a hard time. So with you defending, it's easy for you to work out where you need to be because the enemy comes to you. Even if there's already another squad on defense, defend with them. It makes it even harder for the enemy team as they now have to break through two squads instead of one. Honestly, the amount of teams that don't have a dedicated defense squad is why they get rolled so hard during random advance and secure. Now I might get some flack for this, don't be afraid to build your defensive hub directly on the point. Now, the reason why I say this before you get your pitchforks out is a lot of people get stage fright when fights break out and will naturally stay around their hub whilst engaging the enemy. Now, whilst this is generally a bit of a no-no, if your hub is on the active objective, people are still able to defend whilst they're on the back foot. Whereas if your hab is 300 meters away in some random hangar and the enemy team have got everyone pinned in that building, all the blueberries are gonna be around that hab off the objective while the enemy team are literally laughing at you whilst capping and you can't do a thing about it. And remember, you also place that rally 300 meters away off point. So if you do lose that hab, you've got somewhere to counter from. Now I know defense can get quiet occasionally, so don't be tempted to naturally gravitate towards the attacking objective because the enemy team will sweep in underneath you when you least expect it. You can go on the offensive if that's what the other squad leaders want you to do. If that's the case, you want to get pretty close to the enemy's point, but stay quiet and stay hidden. Place your radio down and then build the hab as far away from it as possible. This cuts down walking time from your spawn dramatically and makes it harder for the enemy team to find your radio. Once you've done this, 
start advancing on the enemy. Make sure this time you don't push from the hab or run in a straight line from it. Try to go on a bit of a flank before you start attacking, because as you start attacking, the enemies will start pushing in the direction that you came from. So if you push directly from your hab, they're eventually going to find it. Now, now you can add people in your squad to fire team roles by clicking on their name and dragging them into either Bravo or Charlie. This lets them mark things on the map for you and your team, and they can also help by placing and building fortifications. Now, with this, you may often get, hey, can you range Bravo for me? To do this, you simply open the map, look for that purple icon, right click it, click on your green squad number and then press place move marker. This gives your squad member the range that they need. Your map is going to be your best friend in all of this. Make sure to check it frequently, looking for enemy marks, as this will give you an indication where the enemy team is and where they are coming from. If you want to mark down anything that the enemy has, just simply right click on your map, move over to that red helmet marker, and this gives you a whole bunch of options of enemy marks, from infantry to vehicles to structures. This all helps keep your team informed to what's going on, even if you haven't spoken to them. And the marks don't have to be 100% accurate either. You hear a tank near you, just mark where you heard that sound come from. Just be sure to tell the other squad leaders, hey, I placed a tank mark. It's not accurate, but that's where I heard it. And honestly, that's pretty much all there is to being a squad leader. Just start off simple and grow from there. Remember to always treat people how you would like to be treated yourself. It is a game at the end of the day. You will find, as you learn and develop as a squad leader, the same people will want to run with you over and over again, and it won't be long until you are a regular at it. Games can easily be a waffle stomp, and things can and do go really badly from time to time. Don't take it personally. There's usually a whole host of reasons as to why your team got rolled in the first place. Now, I've probably left a bunch of bits and pieces out that some of you are going, oh my God, why didn't you mention this? but I'm trying not to make this video a whole host of information overload. So I feel that I have included the main things that will allow a new player to get started up and running pretty quickly. But if any of you do have some good SL tips to share, please do so in the comments down below because I know a lot of people do use these for more information on my videos and feel free to share them on my Discord server as well. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more squad guides, gameplay and updates. Thank you all for watching. Take care and I will catch you in the next video.